bad wedding you've been to. Story one, I used to work for a lighting design production company and every now and then a couple would contact us to their ceremony or reception. So this couple contacts us to do her reception and immediately things start to get odd. The first thing she requests is for us to project an image of Barney, the purple flipping dinosaur, on the wall. We oblige and ask her to send us what photo she wants and stuff. The day before the wedding, she finally responds with I can only describe as a 64x64 64 64 pixel picture of someone's phone with Barney on the screen. So after explaining we need an actual picture and her getting all annoyed and scraping the idea, my boss helps me load up the truck when he hands me literally two lights. For a normal party like this, we bring like 40, 50. So I'm thinking, okay, just going to be an easy day of relaxing. Nope. When I get to the venue, if I can even call it that, imagine the event hall you can think of, like a VFW or Elks Lodge kind of thing. Now make that place half of its current size, 50 years older, rundown, and in the middle of the flipping ghetto of New Jersey. So once I finally set up my two lights in the 5x5 room where the reception is going to be held, the groom's brother shows up and informs me he'll be the DJ. At first I was thinking, okay, he's got proper equipment and seems to know what he's doing. Maybe he'll be fine. Again, no. Doesn't know how to set anything up. Doesn't know how to wire it. Doesn't know the software. Eventually the party starts and the DJ immediately starts blasting music at a deafening volume. I hid with my control board as far behind the DJ as I can because I can't overblown bassy music but this was a special kind of hell. Even as far away and behind from the speakers, my clothes were literally vibrating the whole night. I felt as if I had constant pins and needles from the bass. Now about two hours into the 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. reception, another sign of an often trash wedding, and I decide to get a drink. And since we're not allowed to drink on the job, I just get a water or maybe a cranberry juice to imagine I am, and hopefully the placebo effect makes me forget the night. That's when I learn it's a cash-only bar and that they've been informed by the couple to even charge the vendors. So I paid $4 for a glass of just cranberry juice and retreated to my station. Eventually, they announced that they're going to finally serve the guests food despite being 11 p.m. now, and that they're opening their doing open bar for 30 minutes. That's it. When you work something like this, you usually say, hey, we're here hours earlier than the party and hours after. So can you provide food for our guys? And nine times out of ten, they say no problem. But these people said yes. But when I went in the back to get my food, the bride tells me absolutely no, that I am not allowed to eat despite agreeing on it in our contract. Eventually, the groom explains that they had already agreed that I'm allowed to eat something. He brings me a plate of what looks like whatever the fudge was in the fridge, like a poor lean cuisine someone pre-chewed for me. So I'm thinking whatever they don't care, they just gave me something until I see that's what the whole party is eating. And during that 30 minutes, I have never seen so many people become so utterly wasted in all my time there. People were literally asking for regular drinking glasses to be filled with hard liquor. And bartenders were going along with it and filling glasses all the way. So now the whole reception is walking around with 20 ounces or pint glass full of cheap vodka, rum, tequila, and whatever cow liquor they had. The rest of the party was like any poor club wedding would be. Loud, poor music for the next couple of hours and drunk dancing. Now it's finally 1 a.m. and it's over. I scrounge up what little equipment I had and begin putting it in my truck. When I go in to double check that I left nothing, that's when I see almost the entire party taking turns vomiting on the dance floor and going back to talking from being so absolutely pour out the water flipping drunk. I've never seen anything like it. So I finally get the fudge outside and there is the, the bride, groom, and DJ in front of my truck, vomiting all over it. I'm furious now, because I can't leave since they're so drunk, I couldn't even reason with them, and my car is covered in puke. Eventually, they finally stumble away and I can finally drive my puked-covered car back to our building to let my boss to never do an event for these people ever again. Story 2. Oh man, I'm a retired wedding DJ and I've seen some cow. The one that takes the cake, though, would be this low-budget thing that got handed to me from another DJ. The wedding itself was low-budget as cow, but we got paid well oddly. It was at this town hall in a little farm community. The venue was falling apart, and they had me positioned in this balcony-type area that had a near-vertical set of stairs to access. It was hot, humid, and a total disaster. Dinner consisted of way overcooked poor cuts of beef, more so resembling shoe leather than meat. A slop of potatoes and creamed corn. Yum, yum! Plastic table cloths and disposable plates and utensils. Just setting the stage. No real speeches except the bride and groom who did them separately, not together. Bride gets up, mentions how she basically stole this guy from some other bad person, and who's laughing now. My jaw was almost on the floor. Groom gets up and says, and I quote, so I guess I have to make a speech. I laid out some lines before I got up here, but they're up my nose now, so I guess that's about all I got. 
He left the stage with his hands up like he was a world champ of something. Half the crowd was going nuts, the other half in disbelief. A beer bong showed up. The bridge had a bottle of vodka poured on her, then licked up by any guy able to get a lick. One of the bridesmaids got fingered in the loft where I was set up by someone other than her husband boyfriend, and I'm pretty sure had a train run on her later that night. I would be shocked if there was one person who wasn't seriously drunk getting behind the wheel as I was packing up. Ended up calling the cops to report it because fudge drunk drivers. As I left, I saw a few cruisers up the street. Keep in mind, this is farm country, with a few cars pulled up. Seriously, trash. Honorable mentions go to Bride, who we caught banging one of the groomsmen in the back hallway of the banquet hall where they kept the extra chairs. Endless instances of drunk horny aunts, mothers, and bridesmaids grabbing at my banana as they pretend to make a request, oftentimes telling me the room they're in and to come fudge them when I'm done. The chick who was able to fit the microphone in her mouth then proceeded to give it a solid 10 seconds of fellatio. Some dude who got so drunk he pissed on the wall behind the buffet table in a fake plant. More tit flashes than I can count. Lots of fingering and hand jobs on the dance. Drunk old men hitting on bridesmaids. Drunk old women hitting on groomsmen list goes on. Story 3. I was the maid of honor. Groom-to-be lost his job about nine months before the wedding, so they ended up moving in with his parents. Then they decided to have the whole wedding at his parents' estate, which was over an hour from any named town. Even though my friend had moved well over three hours away from me, I still made every attempt to help with decorations, food, planning, etc. My friend brushed off all of my attempts, saying that it was all covered. Day of the wedding arrives, nobody had bothered to tell any guests coming from a northern direction that a bridge was closed, leading to nearly everyone being around 45 minutes late to both the rehearsal and the wedding. I arrived, carrying my $200 dress that the bride had insisted on, to the unwelcome sight of the groom's party wearing jeans, white shirts, one t-shirt even, work boots, and a pistol. My boyfriend took our food and my clothes inside while I did the whole rehearsing thing, only to come back out looking vaguely sick with my mother in tow. My dad was the preacher for this thing. It turns out that nobody had bothered cleaning the house. No sweeping, no dusting, no cleaning out the dirty dishes from the sink next to where the food was supposed to be laid out. The only decorations were the dust bunnies all over the floor and the overfull litter boxes spilling their contents in every bathroom. My mom and boyfriend set to work after explaining the situation and fighting with the groom's mother to find a broom and some rags, and I set to work on the bride. Again, everyone was late to the wedding, but it didn't matter because the groom decided that he wanted a haircut as he was walking out of the house to go wait on the bride. So everything was delayed by a further 40 minutes while he took his uniformly long hair and created a style that can only be compared to Soka from Avatar. Further, he stopped in to inform the bride that he didn't want any music played during her walk down the aisle. Rather, he wanted to watch her walk down to the sounds of nature, which turned out to be two of their dogs boning. Finally, the wedding is over and we all make our way back into the house for the potluck, grill, and cake. But nobody had bothered to heat up the grill, and all of the food that didn't have a lid was crawling with flies. The cake looked like it was dotted with chocolate chips from a distance, which was quite lovely until you realized they were moving. My friend later wondered aloud why nobody had stayed for more than an hour or why we wouldn't take home any leftovers. Story 4. The main course was large BBQ trays of mac and cheese with hot dog chunks in it. The father of the bride was dressed in a tux, but the shirt was a wife beater. He also started asking random people after the ceremony if they wanted to get down with some meth. Placerville, California, y'all. Not even once. Story 5. It was a lovely wedding except for the maid of honor. Pretty as a bridge troll, she wore a dress several sizes too small and complained about it. She was too hungover to participate in the pictures that afternoon before the wedding. The wedding ceremony went fine, but the reception was a disaster. Her speech wasn't planned, and she proceeded to get so drunk that someone took her keys. The money she held onto from the dollar dance went missing. The icing on the wedding cake was when she slapped the mother of the groom at 1 a.m. when she couldn't get her keys back to get her sweets from the car. The bride was in tears, the groom was beyond pissed, and the county sheriff arrived. It was an absolute train wreck for my friends. Story 6. I was a photographer for a couple that had a mostly nice wedding. What sticks out to me is the groom at the reception, taking off his jacket, tie, and button-down shirt, and just leaving on his hunting camo vest, cowboy hat, and pants. The large Confederate flag tattoo on his arm was the cherry on top. Dude, you were born, raised, and live in an affluent Chicago suburb. Story 7. This was this past summer in Mississippi. My girlfriend's aunt was getting married for the third time to the cousin of her second husband, who I'm pretty sure was in jail at the time. The location was one of those roadside churches you pass by in southern states. We arrived five minutes before the event only to find out the bride wasn't there yet and was still getting ready in her hotel room. 
When she did pull up in her sister's car, she quickly put out her cane and rushed into a private room and put her veil on. The wedding then began. It was a small service and lasted about 30 minutes, including three separate times where a different country love song, not sure what they were, would be played over the PA system, and the bride and groom would just stare at each other awkwardly. When the service was finally over, we convened to church's kitchen for boxes of Walmart fried chicken and Mountain Dew. Story 8. Went to my friend's cousin's wedding as his date. Everything went okay until the preacher opens his mouth. I knew beforehand that the church was Baptist, deep Southern Baptist church, but hey, free cake and a reason to wear a cute dress. I tuned most of his ramblings out until I heard the word close relationship. I perked up because really, what did I just hear close relationship come from this old dude's mouth? Yeah, I did. He went on to say things like, y'all better not have had close relationship already. That's a sin. And a woman is to be submissive to her husband in all things, even in the bedroom. I kind of looked at my friend because what the heck is going on? There are literally children here and the bride and groom both look very uncomfortable. They were both shy people. Still not the worst. The preacher then nudges the groom and says something like, Bet you guys are going to get started on that baby right after the reception. The bride looked absolutely mortified and had a deep blush that went all the way down to her chest. There were some other parts where he mentioned close relationship and what the Bible says about it, and it was all very awkward. Also, it didn't help that the pastor was this old wrinkled dude with a long and slow southern drawl. On the way to the reception, I asked my friend why they chose that preacher and that it didn't seem like the couple knew half of what he was going to talk about. The preacher was the groom's father. Story 9. I'm late to the party. This will get buried. Blah, blah, blah. Here goes. Groom shows up two hours late, obviously. He, the groomsman, and father of the groom arrive in a tour bus. Part of their late arrival is because groom wanted to take a pic on the side of the interstate, with he and his bros all poured water on the bus. Dafuk, moving on, 150 people RSVP had, and over 250 showed up. So there was only seating, food, and drink for 150. When time came for dinner, all those who decided to show up last minute just headed on over to the bar and had a liquid meal. Bottles of liquor start appearing and get taken by the staff. That's normally a no-no. The bottles that don't get taken get smashed on the side of the building. The building is a 130-yo historic such-and-such. -such. They don't like you breaking bottles on the walls there. Who would have thought? Father of the bride decided to tell the DJ that the music sucks by giving his equipment a double Hulk smash. DJ was doing the wedding as a favor to the bride since they were friends, but now his computer was just destroyed, so he tells them to get bent and packs up his gear and heads home. About that time, the bar has been drained, and it's time for a B-double-E-double-R-U-N. Groom heads to the closest convenience store and fills the bed of his truck with cases of beer. The venue had already them off, so it didn't matter what they had to drink, they couldn't do it there. Huge blowout shouting match ensues, and most of the guests and the groom leave. There was no photographed exit for the happy couple, just the bride walking down the entryway with a recently unconfiscated bottle of Jack. All of this happened before 7 p.m. Story 10. About 10 years ago, my brother and his first wife got married at Walmart at the register where they had first met two years prior. How romantic. The ceremony took place at 6 a.m. for two reasons. Because the store was less busy at that time, but also so that it could be broadcast on the local NBC affiliate's morning station break during the Today Show. Because it was on the morning news, we had to sit around and wait for the on-site reporter to tell us we were live, and then the ceremony could begin, and they had three minutes to get it all done. Why? Because the chaplain was live at the studio, so they had to interact with him via a closed circuit feed. Also, they still needed to do the weather and local news. Consequently, the only people in attendance were some of their co-workers already on shift, including her sister, who also was bridegroom complete with blue Walmart vest. Me, because I was the best man and very much overdressed with a button-up shirt, and the bemused reporter doing the live feed. To wrap up this pretty little picture, they got divorced about a year and a half later when they were on vacation in Alaska, because they were drinking and heated words were exchanged. He mentioned how she was a terrible mom for allowing her parents raise her daughter as her sister. She had a kid at 14. And as a result of that, he had to spend the night locked outside of a cabin in November. Apparently, that kind of thing makes an already long flight much longer. Story 11. My sister and I tag-teamed for a while with weddings. She's a professional photographer, and I am a semi-professional baker. This wedding made me refuse to ever do another wedding, and has forced her to become very selective. The bride was a friend of a friend, and a seven-month pregnant bridezilla, who wanted to get married on a hill in a quaint little town that was of no significance, so we gave them a deal. The budget was small, so she only wanted my sister for the ceremony and four hours of the reception. I, on the other hand, had to make the three-hour drive with 400 cupcakes and a small cake bright and early at 6 a.m. As a result, my sister came with me. 
Let's backtrack a few weeks when I had advised the bride that the white chocolate angel food cake with a very specific brand of raspberry jam filling she wanted would not be stable enough to hold the heavy porcelain angel cake toppers that looked like they came straight out of her grandma's figurine collection, and I was advised to shut the F up and make what I was being paid to make. The cupcakes had to be iced in their favorite football teams, colors of and yellow because everyone wants a lovely toothed smile at a wedding. The invitations had the reception listed at a hotel. I had been trying to confirm this location for weeks with the wedding party, but never got a straight answer. We arrived at the hotel, which was more of a colonial inn. The hotel had no idea what the deal was with the reception, but assured me the bridal party was upstairs and I could go find them. My sister and I found a room that was no bigger than about 6x6, stuffed with eight bridesmaids, a makeup artist, hairdresser, mother of the bride and groom, bride, two flower girls, and about four other random family members. It felt like entering hell it was so hot. The bride began to snap at my sister for being late, and after some arguing and exchanging of cash, my sister finally conceded to squeezing into the room to try to take pictures since she had nothing better to do. I found out the reception was moved to the same hill the ceremony was at since there was an indoor picnic shelter there. Naturally, when I assembled the Tower of Awful, the angels started to crush the small cake within minutes. Thankfully, I had brought extra icing which I used to fill in the holes and sat the angels on the table in front of the cake. This later prompted death glares from the bride who tried to stack the angels on top of the cake unsuccessfully before her groom removed them. It was a super windy day and the hill was a steep incline. So as people sat down, some of them were actually tipping backwards out of their chairs. I opted to stand, as did many guests after a while, which made it really fun for my sister to take pictures. Most of the guests were in jeans and sweatshirts. The bride wore tennis shoes, and apparently it was planned from the start for her and the whole wedding party to have matching running shoes. These were like gray and blue Walmart New Balances or something. They looked awful and didn't match the yellow and at all. Even though they were advised not to light the unity candles due to the wind they insisted, and rather than blow out the candles they were blown over, which caught the flimsy card table and the grass on fire. Luckily, some guys who wore work boots to the wedding managed to stomp it out. The reception was catered by a local diner, who served everything cafeteria-style out of tin foil trays and wore their classiest diner uniforms to do so. They ran out of food before even half the guests were fed. The DJ was the bride's 12-year-old brother with his iPod and a portable speaker. My sister started to feel sick about halfway into the ceremony, so when the reception passed into the five hours mark, she was ready to leave or pass away. The bride finally agreed to do the first dance and the father-daughter dance. Yes, five hours in with only about 20 guests left, all of whom danced. This prompted a mother-son dance, a mother-daughter dance, son-in-law, mother-in-law dance, sibling dance, grandparents dance, cousins dance, stepfather-daughter dance, stepmother-son-in-law dance, mother-in-law, daughter-in-law dance, father-in-law, daughter-in-law dance and bride maid of honor dance. Yeah, it was weird. But two hours later, we finally left and thankfully were both given huge $300 tips from the family who saw the hell we went through. Story 12. A family friend's son got married recently. The bride was escorted down the aisle by our friend, her future father-in-law. This is all fine and well, except for the fact that her father, who she had a perfectly good relationship with prior to the day of the wedding, was in attendance and trying very hard to not look absolutely gutted that he wasn't chosen to walk his daughter down the aisle. He managed to keep it together and was a perfect gentleman and host for the rest of the event. Why our friend agreed to this, I have no idea, but it was probably one of the most classless things I've ever seen. And one of the classiest reactions on behalf of the father. Story 13. A few weeks before the wedding, the groom posts to Facebook about how he's never getting married. A week before the ceremony, the groom disappears. After a couple days with no contact, the bride cancels the catering in the hall. The day before the wedding, the groom shows up and then agrees to get married. With everything canceled, they decide to hold an outdoor wedding in a local park and have everyone over at their house for KFC. The groom was late to the ceremony, leading most people to think he bailed at the last minute. When he arrived, the bride chewed him out while she hid behind some bushes so he wouldn't see her. The officiant was an old man in a trucker hat who sang the ceremony. The reception is in their backyard and a bring-your-own-chair affair. The problem with that is that they took possession of the house the day before the ceremony and literally didn't have time to clean the house, and most importantly, the bathroom, from the horrific state the previous owners left it in. My wife used the bathroom at the gas station down the road. That's how bad it was. All told, I can't blame the bride for throwing together a wedding in a day. However, no one was all that surprised to learn their marriage lasted three weeks. Story 14. The bachelor party involved midget tossing in Niagara Falls. The reception was at Dragonfly Nightclub with a rented booth and a bottle. 
Bridge and Groom were dating for eight months. They are happily married with three kids now. I didn't see that coming, but I am thrilled that it worked out. Story 15. I attended my ex's brother's second wedding, and in the middle of the reception, the families of the bride and groom came yelling into the room that the bride has been kidnapped, and the only way to get her back is if we can collect $500 from all of you. They tried to act like it was some cute game to get honeymoon spending money for the couple, but everyone had already brought their gifts and placed them appropriately on the gift table. That paired with the fact that the couple rode off into the sunset in his base boat made it hands down the worst wedding I've attended. Story 16. My cousin's daughter's wedding, hands down. They had it at a rundown VA hall where the door opened to the street separated by only a sidewalk. That was kept open all night so you could hear cars whizzing by the entire time. There was no catering or food service. It was food people brought in crockpots and stuff. There was no rhyme or reason and everyone rushed the tables at once, including the bride and groom, outdoor casual picnic style. That wouldn't have been too bad, but there wasn't nearly enough for everyone, so some people got little or nothing. There was no DJ or even a sound system, so my uncle just played music on some tinny portable radio thing. It was horrible. I don't even remember if there was a photographer or anything, or even cake to be honest. I completely understand keeping weddings on the down low price-wise, but oh no. I don't think the couple made it a year either, so it was a waste for all involved. Edit, the couple. Story 17. I haven't attended this wedding yet, but my MAL is getting married next month. Provided it doesn't get called off beforehand, I'm pretty sure it's going to get real trashy. Half of the family is not invited for one childish reason or another. Instead of inviting her sister, she invited her ex-husband and his mistress. A known dope fiend petty criminal will also be in attendance. The theme is the Irish flag, Kelly Green, Orange, and Shamrocks galore. Can't wait. Story 18. I worked at a little mom and pop frozen yogurt della coffee place when I was 16. I often closed the place and did the till. And there was a woman about 30 who often worked that shift. She was getting married and asked me to be a bridesmaid, which was weird enough given we were just co-workers and had no personal relationship outside of work, given the big age gap. I go for a dress fitting. The dress was full on cotton candy pink taffeta, T-length full skirt with huge puff sleeves and lace detail sweetheart neckline. No, this was not in 1982, but the dress came from there, no doubt. It was horrific, but I go along with it. The week of the wedding, she tells me her maid of honor can't make it to the wedding anymore, so now I'm her maid of honor. Her 16-year-old co-worker is now her maid of honor. She also takes time to show my some underwear she bought for her husband-to-be with an elephant on it, and a hole for... We met to have our hair done by a family member, and I was given a comedically huge poof. The bride's hair was a fuzzy mess. There were maybe 20 people at the wedding in this large Presbyterian church. Reception was in the church lobby with some coffee and Safeway cake. Story 19. The royal pizza wedding. A work friend and his GF had been engaged for like five years, and during that time couldn't manage to save up $1,400 between the two of them to have their dream wedding at a local medieval times type place with pizza buffet on a Wednesday morning, which they constantly referred to as the royal wedding, without a hint of irony. Eventually, as it began to look like they just may have $1,400 together, the bride's father stepped in and said he'd pay for them to do literally anything else. He was against the marriage, but also didn't want the pizza buffet. So they plan a wedding in a church neither goes to with the reception at the bride's dad's house. Total bridezilla. I somehow ended up in the bridal party, despite the fact that she hated me only because she had literally no other friends. We go to David's bridal where she screams at the woman working there about how she's got $100 to spend and they better treat her with some respect. The woman came back with a dress that would be just right and was actually like five sizes too big. Ultimate passive aggressive move. It was awesome. So 100 other meltdown later and we're at the rehearsal dinner at a local discount pizza buffet place because apparently that was a deal breaker. The night is tense as both families clearly think the other is trash. Hint, they're both right. And as everyone is leaving a full-on parking lot, brawl erupts between the two families after the bride punches the groom in the face in front of the priest. Next day, I'm sure this thing isn't happening and I'm excited for an unexpected free Saturday. Turns out it's still on. Literally everyone in both families, including the bride and groom, have eyes. Haven't spoken to any of them since, but have heard the divorce was just as spectacular. Story 20. My cousin's wedding was a glorious redneck affair. It took place at a park in Michigan in August. So it was right around 100 and like 80% humidity screaming hot, and the air is like breathing soup. So of course you have uncovered metal folding chairs for your guests to sit on. It was an afternoon wedding. The bridesmaids were wearing navy blue velour mini dresses and sparkly silver stripper heels. If you don't know, velour is like a heavy velvet type fabric and thin shoe heels are really, really hard to walk in on grass because they sink in. 
The groom, Billy the Stump, was standing at the archway with his sunglasses on and his hands in his pockets, rocking back and forth on his heels. The efficient had a word with the best man, who yanked Billy's hands out of his pockets, took his sunglasses off, and told him to stand up straight. The guy who was in charge of hitting play on the boombox was taking advantage of the beer cooler. Make a lob light, the official beer of classy weddings. They didn't do any sort of fabric for the aisle, just four lines of red spray paint and a rectangle. When my cousin started down the aisle, she wasn't wearing a dress so much as a shirt and a skirt, both of which were handmade by my aunt, which would have been fine if either of them had fit. Her veil was four pieces of tulle stapled to a headband. We know because we could see the staples twinkling in the blistering August sunlight. Billy the Stump's grandfather was in attendance, wearing his finest wife beater and blue cotton work pants, the kind with the giant six-inch cuffs, held up with red suspenders. But you could tell it was a formal occasion because he'd put his teeth in, which we knew because he kept sucking his dentures down and clacking them back into place. When the service was over, the recessional failed to play because the boombox guy was helping himself to another beer. He realized he'd missed his cue and ran over to hit play, and the bride and groom walked up the aisle to We've Only Just Begun, while their three-year-old daughter trailed behind. The food was being served in one of the park pavilions. The centerpieces were three-inch potted plants in the original orange plastic candy on a four-inch mirror. There was one of these for every eight-foot-long picnic table. Pre-meal nibbles appeared to have been peanuts and mampy M's in those little paper Dixie-type cups. Except that this is outside at a park, and the local squirrels had already raided the cups. Fun fact, Mamp M's melt in squirrel paws on a hot summer day, but the little multicolored squirrel paw prints all over the tables make a festive addition to any party. Edit. I have just learned that this same cousin brought jello shots to her dad's funeral. The necks just keep getting redder. Story 21. Someone I knew got married to a guy whose family lived in the middle of nowhere and was super religious. She told me about the wedding and when it was, but I never got an invitation. She told me she had sent it. I am 100% convinced her in-laws took out invitations for people they didn't want to come. I went anyway and drove several hours to get there. Found out I was not invited to the reception because it was for family only. The bride walked down the aisle in a used dress with noticeable stains on it. In her vows, she pledged to be subservient to her husband. After the wedding, I ended up getting invited to the reception because so few people were going. But I ditched and drove several hours home so I could get away from that backwards town. The couple divorced not long after, and that woman is now married to a much better sane dude. Story 22. My cousin's wedding was a Wisconsin Northwoods mess. Also the first time my boyfriend met my family, and I had to repeatedly remind him that my dad's oldest sister's family, the bride was her daughter, isn't close with my family at all, just so he didn't run the other way when we got back home to New York. Also that the only reason he went was because he was working in Chicago and wanted to come meet everyone, so it was his fault. They were married and had the reception in a garage belonged to the town because a friend was a mechanic for the city and could get them in for free. Actually wouldn't have been that bad. It was a nice big open space with concrete floors. If there wasn't a school bus parked in the oh no thing and they had actually done some decorating, but it was just folding tables and chairs in a garage. They hadn't even cleaned it really. Her dress was her off the rack 90s baby blue prom dress from J.C. Penney that she never got to wear because she dropped out of high school a month before prom. I offered to help her personalize it. I work in costuming for theater, so I can customize anything pretty easily, even if she insisted on the oh no dress. She insisted it wasn't necessary and decided to bedazzle the fudge out of it herself. Low budget, my big fat gypsy wedding style. She also wore a Party City quality war bonnet during the ceremony, groom's Native American, to show she was accepting their culture. It was bad. Open bar consisted of cans, Natty Light, and in Bush. Pour out the water warm because they didn't have enough room in the coolers, which they ran out of within an hour. No booze. Dinner was brosted chicken and french fries, or sub sandwiches, all purchased from the local Walmart and brought in in their Walmart boxes. You wanted something specific? Had to dig through it with your hands because there was no serving utensils. Halfway through when I was up helping my very young niece go to the bathroom, my uncle sat down and wistfully told my boyfriend about how I had developed well since high school and college had been great for tightening up my body. Though you'd know about how tight she is, huh? And then asked if he wanted to get high with him, my equally trash cousins, and the groom. My cousin Sam, who's my father's non-trash sister's daughter, was maid of honor and had to run interference between the two the rest of the night because he was so creeped out by him. Sam also had to deal with calming my cousin down because her high-as-a-kite groom decided to eat the cake before they officially it. Dude seriously just grabbed a fork and started eating, and then screamed and called her a bad person like his second wife, 
when she said he couldn't do that until they it for everyone. We left around this time and ended up going back to our hotel and getting drunk with my immediate family and my dad's brother, horrified at what we had just witnessed. Story 23. Small town Wisconsin wedding. The bride's dress was off rack, untailored, and showed off all her cheap scratch tattoos. The ceremony itself was a cow show. The flowers were plastic and from the Dollar Tree, and half the groomsmen were either high as a kite or so hung over. They were still drunk from the night before. The reception was in the back room of local bar, and after the ceremony, the mother of the groom asked me and another one of the groomsmen's girlfriends to go decorate the venue. We had less than an hour to make this dirty, dark room presentable with plastic tablecloths, paper streamers, and glow sticks. The food was Walmart fried chicken, biscuits, and instant mashed potatoes. The bride got smashed, but the groom had to stay sober because he had to drive them to their honeymoon flight, which left at 3 a.m. and was at an airport almost three hours away. Story 24. Well, I went to one wedding where the guests were given jars of tea leaves with bride and groom's wedding, date and location. My mother, ever the tea fancier, collected a lot of them. We still have five or six of them, whereas the bride and groom divorced within a year. The tea lasted longer than the marriage. Story 25. Got a faxed wedding invitation at my office to attend a cousin's wedding. It said, buy OF, bring your own food, and a lawn chair. Cash gifts only. We laughed for days on what food to bring a two-piece chicken dinner, or a personal pan pizza. Alas, I found myself without a suitable lawn chair and could not attend the festivities. Story 26. We almost didn't go to the wedding, as we didn't care much for the couple, but a lot of our friends were going and figured we could still have fun. I am so glad I went. Like many receptions, this one began with some drinks and then some speeches. It turns out the father of the bride had recently began doing stand-up comedy in amateur clubs and decided a wedding reception was a good place to test his routine. The lighter jokes were centered on. From there, it degraded to talk of on girls' faces, among other things. Now, raunchy comedy can be funny for some, but it's hard to enjoy it over the cries of parents pleading for him to stop while covering their kids' ears. This was not an adult reception. There were kids everywhere. The real fun came after the groom got drunk. They played I'm Too Alluring and wanted the groom and groomsmen to put on a show. Most made light of it as expected, but the groom stripped down to his tidy whities The song ended and he was encouraged to get dressed. He grabbed the mic and started screaming that all you fat fudge wished you looked as good at his age. People tried to calm him down with little effect. His little sister's 16-year-old friend made a comment that he needs to get his cow together. He proceeded to grab her hair with both hands and viciously headbutted her. Her nose exploded and the groom took off. Apparently, he turned himself into the police a few days later. I guess the girl had to have multiple surgeries to fix her face. Story 27 my little cousin got married in who the fudge knows where Maryland in the dead peach middle of the hottest July in years. For the ceremony, we had to sit on very hot and slightly humid bales of hay covered in tarp. I brought my blind 84-year-old Bobsha, Polish Grammy, and spent the entire time picking spiders and ticks which had come out of the hay bales off of both her and myself. The reception was in the nearby barn. No AC, a ton of flies all over the food, and incredibly loud dubstep. My very old school Bobsha had the most dubious look on her face and said, She's getting married in a barn? Story 28. Went to a wedding this summer and we had fun trying to guess which side of the family our target was. Couldn't have a greater social divide between the two families. One was middle class, but with a certain class. The other was pure white trash. So we were seated with the couple's neighbors. From the camping grounds, they rent a parcel on each year. One of the guy had his girlfriend with him, who used to be a stripper where I used to work as a bouncer back in the day. Turns out his ex was a plus one from the white trash side and spent the night crying in the bathroom or randomly hitting the poor bastard behind the head. Also saw a drunk 18-year-old, if that, that proceeded to come back to the dance floor from the bathroom, having forgotten to pull her mini skirt down. Thankfully, she was wearing a see-through G-string. Oh, and she was violently rebuking all the old ladies trying to tell her, screaming that they were a bunch of jealous complainers past their prime. I ended up drinking real fast at the beginning to get by used ASAP at the site I was seeing. Crashed in the car a few hours and drove my wife home around 6 a.m. the next day when the party was over. Oh yeah, I also saw my brother's ex had two kids together. It was a festival of crazy. Story 29. So I'm a minister and I was approached by a couple that wasn't that well off, so I donated my services. The day of the wedding arrives and we decide to do it illegally in a state park without a permit. I'm the only person in there that didn't have multiple awful tattoos. The bride was late by half an hour. Naturally, the groom is stressed waiting on his bride, so he produces a joint, takes a hit, and offers it to me and the father of the bride. I respectfully decline. The bride arrives and her brothers play God Gave Me You over car speakers. 
The only problem is that no one thought to actually download the song so they were relying on data in a state park. Naturally, it takes forever for the song to buffer, so the bride is standing there awkwardly hand in hand with her screaming daughter. To no one's surprise, they were trying to play the song off of YouTube, so an ad plays first. The bride walks down the aisle yelling at her daughter to shut up the whole time. I do my part, then the couple recites their vows, and now for the rings. Well, there are no rings. Instead, the bride and groom to be decided to get tattooed rings, so I had them fist bump while saying in unison, With this ring I thee wed. Story 30 Ex-boyfriend's aunt is getting remarried to the nephew of her ex-husband. I begrudgingly tag along only to find out that we're heading into the nearby run-down neighborhood. You know, the one across the tracks type. We enter into this house, and there's a makeshift arch in the living room surrounded by a cow ton of lawn chairs, leaving a pathway to what I figured out was the backyard. The arch will be the only decoration. Halfway through the ceremony, my ex leans in to tell me that they went and got the old pastor out of the nursing home to have the service because he was a good family friend disregarding the fact he had dementia. And may, I don't know, forget how everything goes. After that was done, the couple made a short walk into the backyard while we all tried to file into the kitchen and dining room to wait for them to walk back in. The homemade sandwich platter looked decent enough, but the fog of cane breathe kind of terminated my appetite for anything. Oh, I didn't mention that no one quit smoking through this whole entire ordeal? Yeah, they didn't. I must add in at this point that these weren't poor, lovely souls. They were excurrent meth head scandy users, and there were more than enough attendees to contribute to the my craziest time in jail talk. The groom also had a decent job, but they were always squandering their money, somehow cough sweets cough, to leave them broke until the next payday. It was like something out of a biography for the Great Depression, except this was 2015. Story 31. Years ago, one of my friends had her wedding reception at the Elks Lodge in town. There was room at the venue to host more than one event at a time, though parties would have to share the same common areas like bath. The other wedding party was super trashy. Bridesmaids crying on the staircase up to the bathrooms, wedding party and guests alike doing keg stands, and a fist fight culminating in a visit from the cops. Story 32. I was at a punk wedding in some village. The groom had a suit, she had a white dress. But they both had some high heels like Steels or Martins. After the ceremony and some usual wedding things, there was a punk rock concert with several bands instead of some regular wedding band playing dancing stuff. It was all outside and it was raining. Mud everywhere. I was playing guitar in one of those bands. It was cool and fun, but I guess it could be considered trashy. Story 33. Once worked a wedding that ended with two girls getting into a screaming, hair-pulling fight over some guy in the middle of the dance floor and the bride flipping on the fluorescent lights and screaming, We paid $12,000 for this wedding and you go and act all ghetto. Get the fudge out, everybody! and then ran out crying. The husband's kids from a previous relationship all looked pretty traumatized. I wish I was kidding. Story 34. My cousin got married four days after her 18th birthday to a dude she knew mostly from a distance. There wasn't enough food at the wedding. Seriously, the serving sizes were appropriate for toddlers. Everyone there was depressed AF because we all knew she was making an epic mistake. The vibe was more funeral than wedding. The groom who is Lily White decided to enter the reception via breakdancing. There wasn't any booze because 18-year-olds. Everyone kept leaving to go outside and slam beers in my uncle's car. It's been over a decade, and I still get all cringy thinking about it. Story 35. The first wedding of a college roommate was pretty trashy IMO. Background info. The bride was really young. I think she had just turned 18 a few days before the wedding. They fought over their vows for months before this wedding. He wanted to make up their own. She wanted prefab. You wouldn't believe how heated this argument got night after night. My date and I get to the church with barely a minute to spare. We're ushered in by someone's flustered family member who clearly doesn't appreciate that we're walking in as the ceremony is about to start. First thing I notice, no real church music is playing. It's all Kenny G. I groan and roll my eyes because my roommate thinks Kenny G is high-class music. I see my friends and take a seat. The very first thing whispered to me is, I wonder who won? We all laugh. The procession of grandparents begins. This is the longest procession I've ever goddamn seen. I felt like I was sitting there for 30 minutes. How many flipping grandparents do two people have? Next, roommates' cousin brothers, oh yes, this is true, come tumbling down the aisle as flower boys and ring bearers looking like they're doing some crappy version of Brazilian martial arts dancing. They didn't give a cow. In fact, no one did. Not one of the 300 hundred grandpas or grandmas stepped in to whisk them to their seats. After that ludicrous display, we waited 10 minutes before the forgettable wedding party decided to grace us with their presence. Don't forget this entire time the same 10-hour Kenny G song is playing, or maybe it was a bunch of different Kenny G songs, who can tell? The entire wedding party makes it to the front. We wait. And we wait and wait and wait and wait while listening to Kenny G. 
a toothless redneck on the bride's side stands up and yells, She ain't coming! Hey, everybody, she ain't coming! I crack up as he's wrestled back into his seat and shushed. We wait some more. The bride still doesn't appear. The 10-hour Kenny G song mercifully comes to an end. And that's when the organist starts playing the bride's music. I couldn't believe it! That illegitimate child purposely made everyone listen to his Kenny G CD in its entirety. He smiles widely as he takes his place at the top of the stage. There wasn't an altar. To watch his bride come hobbling down the aisle like one leg is a foot shorter than the other. Damn it. I'm going to have to come back to this later. Back people are alarmed. Did bride hurt herself? Is that why she was late? I asked a friend if our roommate mentioned her injury. Did she break her ankle? He shrugged. Then it happened. My roommate suddenly starts flailing in this weird, overdramatic way until he produces a woman's stripper shoe that was wedged in his right pocket. In sweeping, large movements, he holds the shoe up on one hand and then kneels in front of her to slip it on her bare foot. I guess that explained the hobbling. I zoned out for most of the ceremony until the minister announced that it was time for them to say their vows. Everyone in our group leaned forward in excitement. Here it was. We'll finally know who won after months of nasty fights. He says the bride and groom have written their own vows. Ooh! My roommate proceeds with a rambling monologue that puts Jimmy Vollmer's 12 Days of Christmas to shame. The minister turns to the bride who loudly says she forgot her vows. Everyone in our group gave some silent oohs. My roommate couldn't hide how pissed off he was. He glared at her the entire time she said her vows to him. The minister finishes and tells roommate he can kiss the bride. Despite being angry, he starts with his hilarious theatrics again. To prepare for the big kiss, he fully extends both arms with his right hand on the bride's cheek and his left arm slightly raised behind him. He holds this pose for a few seconds, and then he grabs her waist and pulls her into a Hollywood-style dip. Some guests oohed and odd. I lost it. My date tried to elbow me out of my rudeness, but then the Kenny G exit music triggered even more laughter. There was a one. Two-hour break-in between the ceremony and reception, which took place at a dingy Elks Lodge basement while Bingo was being held upstairs. There were tiny little plastic high heels on the table filled with mints and a few Disney Cinderella figures scattered about. The bride and groom were an hour late. My roommate excitedly whispers to us that they were late because they had close relationship in the limo. She's 18 and legal now. By that time, every single plastic shoe was empty. People were even searching empty tables for unattended mints. The bridesmaids ushered the bride to the middle of the tiny dance floor to pin up the back of her dress. As they billowed it to straighten everything out, the back of the dress flipped up too high, giving everyone a full view of the bride's bare peach. A bunch of dudes gave my roommate the thumbs up while a gaggle of them formed behind her, waiting for it to happen again. While that was going on, people were starting to put out the food. I sauntered over to see the spread. A couple trays of crackers, two trays with cheese, and those tiny gross pickles, and three huge dishes of canned beanie weenie. I had forgotten that he said he wanted beanie weenie served at his reception. I grabbed my date and headed towards the door. I wish I had stayed for the rest of the show, but my stomach couldn't take it anymore. My friend said there were two fights in the parking lot and a few drunken fights with other inhabitants of the Elk Lodge because their guests kept raiding the upstairs game. The fighting went on all night. They divorced two years later.